afraid. So how do we overcome fear? Well, I'm glad the story doesn't end here. John 14 begins with Jesus comforting his disciples with these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This is the first way we can overcome fear. Cut through the chaos. The thing about chaos is that it has a tendency to be loud. It demands our attention. It's all we can hear. These initial words of Jesus are so powerful. Just seven words, but it cuts through the chaos of the disciples' lives. When you are afraid, it is so important to allow God's voice to cut through all other noises. The disciples heard him say, do not let your hearts be troubled. And today, no matter what you are facing, the same voice and the same message can be heard by you. Once Jesus has the disciples' attention, he turns them away from their present circumstances and towards his vision for the future. In other words, he changes their perspective. Listen to his words. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? What is Jesus talking about? One moment he's encouraging the disciples not to be afraid. And in the next breath, he's talking about his father's house. This is really important. Jesus is painting a picture of the disciples' future in heaven. Have you ever noticed that all of our fears are based on things that may happen here on earth? This is why Jesus starts talking about heaven. He wants to remind us that there is something better. Sure, there's lots of stuff happening here on earth that might make us fearful. Yes, there's conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Yes, people are still dying from COVID. Yes, wildfires are still burning in New Mexico. And yes, my mom still says I have to clean my room. (laughs) But all of these things are happening here on earth. They're temporary. I just wish someone would tell my mom that. Whatever you are facing, just for a moment, can I remind you that our Father is in heaven right now preparing a place for you? Doesn't that give you peace? In fact, we haven't read this verse yet, but later in the passage, Jesus is promising his peace and he says, I do not give as the world gives. This means the peace of God is very different from the peace the world offers. The world tries to find peace, but in the end realizes it's only temporary. Think of all the things we do in an attempt to keep ourselves safe. We lock the door or set the alarm. We get a moment of peace. Security lights, cameras, pepper spray all give us a moment of peace. But God's peace isn't just moments of peace. It lasts forever. But maybe you're thinking, heaven sounds nice, but I need help now. Well, let's keep reading and we'll find the secret weapon. Jesus makes us a promise in John 14, 26 through 27 when he says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you these things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Want to know the secret weapon? Cling to the Holy Spirit. This is amazing. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit so that we don't have to go through life alone. Just like I clung to my dad's hand on that roller coaster at Disneyland, we need to cling to the Holy Spirit. He wants to be with us through life's ups and downs and all of its twists and turns. So Jesus promises us the helper, the Holy Spirit, for those times when we are afraid. So we cling to this promise. Today, if you are afraid, remember, when we cut through the chaos, change our perspective, and cling to the Holy Spirit, we can conquer fear and live in perfect peace. Wow, huh? Oh my goodness. Give her a few years, she'll be wanting my job. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for being at church today. Are you excited to be here? It's a great Sunday. I know I say that every Sunday because it's true every Sunday. It's always good to be with God's people in God's presence. Um, I want to take just a moment. It's graduation season. How many of you know someone who's graduating? Uh, I just want to say congratulations. We have I, I, seven or eight graduates here at Harvest uh, this, this, uh, this season, and we're so proud of all of them. And uh, our daughter graduated on Thursday, and so uh, we had a, a little party, a little shindig this weekend. And we have family in town, so I want to welcome, we have some family that are sitting right back here that are visiting. And uh, my parents are here, which um, they're visiting too. We don't get to see them, even though they live here. But uh, 
We're, we're, we're so thankful. But congratulations to all of the graduates. And then one quick announcement. Uh, Father's Day is coming up in a couple of weeks, okay? And uh, you, dads, listen, I'm just going gonna, gonna to tell you, okay? Moms do way better at going to church on Mother's Day than dads do on Father's Day. I don't know what it is about you dads. Dads, you're like, it's my day. I'm going golfing. I'm going fishing. I'm going. Listen, the forests are closed. You can't fish. Golf's no fun anyway. You don't. Listen, just come to church, right? Come to church. We have some gifts for you. We're going to have a great day. And then here's, here's my challenge. We, we came up with something. I think it's going to be fun, but it's only going to be fun if you participate. All right? Are you ready? Here's what we're going to do. So there's, there's, this, there's this TikTok thing right now that kids are doing, and they're bringing their stuff to school in anything but a backpack. All right? That's what the TikTok thing is, anything but a backpack. So we're doing a Father's Day version and we're saying this, come to church driving anything but your daily driver, okay? You can get here any way you want except the normal car, truck, vehicle that you drive. You're going to have VIP parking, okay, if you do this. If you come to your daily driver, we're going to wave you on to the back. You're going to park way far away. You're going to hike in with your head down in shame, okay? That, that's how this works. I want to see you pull in here in a tractor. I want to see you ride in a lawnmower. I want to see you ride in a bicycle. Listen, y'all, I learned how to ride a hoverboard this week, okay? I'm going to see if I can ride from my house all the way here on a hoverboard and not die or break anything or any of that, okay? I want you coming, like, if you have a horse, this would be a great week to just ride your horse to, to church. Um, Rollerblades, uh, I mean, I want, like, think creatively, all right? We're going to give some prizes away, and uh, we're just going to have a lot of fun. Fire trucks, fire trucks, Justin. I mean, I'm just saying, if you, ha if you happen to own a fire truck, you could drive it, all right, on Father's Day, okay? Um, so does that sound fun? Or are you just like, what in the world? It's okay. It could be both. It could be both reactions, both at the same time. So Father's Day is going to be a blast at Harvest. You're not going to want to miss it. And then I want to tell you one story, and then we're going to get into the message. Um, last uh, Sunday night uh, was the handoff from in our youth ministry from Pastor Tyler and Natalie to Pastor Andrew and Madison. And, um, and so I, was, I told them, I said, I want to be here. I, I, just, I was so excited for this. And so I was hanging around, and before you started, uh, the Andrew and Madison had a bunch of the kids, a bunch of the students, and, and they had gathered up, and they were playing. They were just playing with a volleyball. They were bouncing the volleyball around, seeing how many times they could bounce it and keep it in the air. If not like volleyball, but just keep it in the air, keep it there in a circle. And so I came and I was, I was playing, you know, and having fun. And I issued a challenge, all right, because I'll just be honest, they weren't doing very good, okay? They were, they were getting like three, four. I'm like, y'all can do better than this. God. All right, so I said, okay, here's the deal. If you can keep it off the, out of the air and off the ground 25 times in a row, then Harvest is going to, we're going to give $500 to, to the youth for Speed the Light. That's our missions part of youth. So we said 500 bucks, all right, we're going to do that. And Andrew, this is his confidence level, first week, all right, he goes, what if we get 30? I said, all right, you get 30, we'll do 1,000, we'll do 1,000, okay? I said, but you get one shot at this, one shot. They didn't do it in one shot. So <laughs> we said, you know what, at Harvest, we're, we're a church that believes in grace. Anyone thankful for grace? Thankful for grace. Second chances. So, all right, y'all get a second chance. They didn't get on a second chance. I said, you know what? God's grace, it's, uh, it's bigger. It's bigger. It, I don't know about you, but in my life, I've needed third, fourth, 18th chances, right? They needed it too, all right? So, so we just kept going, and we just kept going, and we just kept going. We persevered, okay? And I have a little video to show you, okay? Because I want you to, to experience this in all of its glory. Because this was, I, I, I honestly got lost count, but we're going to say this was try number 27, okay? We're just, we're just going to, we're just going to go with that, okay? So check this out, all right? Here we go.
All right, so, so you got to help me. You got to help me. You, did you see the scoop? I, it didn't hit the ground. It didn't hit the ground. I scooped it right out of the basketball thing. So I just need your help real quick, okay? You're going to vote by, by applause. Should we go ahead and just, g- just give $1,000 to missions to speed the light? What do you think? There you go. I, I, someone asked Andrew this week, how'd your first week go? He said, it went great. We raised $1,000 to speed the light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're so excited. Think good things are happening here at Harvest. Uh, so we've been in a series called We, and, and, and the idea is, like, if someone were to ask you, what kind of a church is, is Harvest, that you would have some, some language to describe kind of who we are. And so we have these, these phrases, and, and I'm going to see, you, I think you probably, uh, we've, we've only done two so far. It's taken us a little while. You probably know what they are, so I'm going to ask you to help me. The first one helps us to talk about how we value community, and the way that we say it, you can help me is we say we okay this side this side got it this I don't know what these guys they need to come to church more more often we don't do life alone all right that that that's the phrase we don't do life alone and we're really committed to that. That's why we do, you know, things like food truck Sundays. And, and that, that's why we have uh, life groups. And that's why we're doing all these things. You know, the, the men's group Bible study and the women's groups. All these. It's because we're really committed to this. Like, it's not just something we say. We really don't want to do life alone. And then the second one is about the value of our faith. And the way we say that one is we say that we depend on God. Okay, we depend on God. And in the last couple of weeks, as we've talked about this one, um, we, we, we've tried to help you with, you know, I, I don't want this one just to be kind of like a pie in the sky. Like, yeah, we depend on God. Like, how do we actually do that? And so we talked about, you know, the Bible, and we gave away the Glorify app, which so many of you are, have been telling me you're enjoying. I'm so thankful for that. Last week, we talked about prayer, and, and we gave away that book, and you can pick one of those up if you, if you missed it. And so I've, I've been trying to answer some questions about prayer. We started with this, does prayer work? That was two weeks ago, and, and, and I think it does, and I, I think most of you do as well, but, but there is a caveat. We said this, yes, prayer works, but not always the way you think it's going to work, right? In other words, we depend on God. He's in control. He does, he does it the way he wants to when he wants to. And, and then last week, we, we answered this question, is prayer for normal people, right? And, and that's, truthfully, that's all of us. And, and, and we, we, we looked at, like, can, can we, you know, normal everyday? Day, Joe's, can we pray big prayers to God? And, and I think the answer is yes. And today, this is the question I want to answer. Is prayer fun? Okay? Is prayer fun? Now, let, let me tell you why, okay? Growing up, I grew up in church. I, I, I thought back this week, like, how, do I, how did I think about prayer growing up in the church? Here, here's some ways. Is I, I, I thought of prayer as work, okay? It was like, this is, the, this is the work that Christians do, right? We get up early. That's like farming, right? We get up early and we pray, right? We, just, we work. We, we got, you know, I mean, like, you, you have, you're a prayer warrior if you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. We applaud it. You know, someone's like, I get up at 6. And then the next, oh, I get up at 5. And someone I, like, I get up at three. It's like, do you ever sleep? No, I always talk to the Lord, always, you know? It's just, it's work, right? It's like, I, I thought, when I was growing up, I just thought, man, prayer is work, right? I also thought of prayer as warfare, okay? And, and it is. To be fair, it is. It's, it's spirit, there's just spiritual warfare. The Bible tells us our weapons are not carnal weapons. They're, it's not the same. We, we, we don't go to war, you know, with, with swords and, and handguns and, and tanks. Like, we go to war in prayer. And, and, it, and it is. It is. But, but I'm, try, I'm trying to help you today. Is prayer fun? It, that, that seems to really, that doesn't go with work or, or warfare. Growing up, I thought maybe, maybe that, that it was just a duty, right? It was like, this is an obligation. This is something you have to do, right? Or here's another word. It was a discipline, right? It's like, this is a discipline. You got to do this every day, you know? Don't miss a day, you know? And, and I don't know if you ever did this, but you, like, you start a Bible reading plan. I'm going to read it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read. I'm going to pray. And like four days in, you're four days behind, right? I mean, now I got to start over, right? I meet people all the time. It's like July, right? And they're like, I'm still in, you know, Exodus, you know, which that's the second book of the Bible. Anyway, you following me? 
And then you feel guilty because, like, it's a discipline. This is what Christians do. we we got to do this, right? Which, which leads me to this. People, some people think of it as it's religious, it's just a religious thing, we, it, 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 and it can go that way. It can become a, just a, a religious thing that we do. And then lastly, if I'm just honest with you, and my parents are here, and they were my pastors growing up, but I thought growing up it was boring. I mean, it was just boring. And I was like, man, why would anyone want to do this? Like, this, this is boring. Like, you're just sitting there, and you're just talking, and no one's talking back to you, and it's three in the morning, and you're sleepy. You know, I mean, it's just boring. It, it, just be honest. Anyone ever think that prayer is boring? Anyone? It, you can admit it in church. It, I, I already admitted it to you. I, I grew up thinking, in fact, I, I kind of thought of prayer like eating my veggies, okay? It was like, you're just, you're just supposed to do it, right? You don't really like them. But, but you got to do it. When I was in elementary school, um, when I was in elementary school, one day uh, I got my lunch and I got and I sat down and I had a chocolate milk. Woo, chocolate milk in elementary school lunch. And I had like lasagna and they had peas. Okay, they had peas. And I ate my lasagna and I drank my chocolate milk. And I know kids these days won't understand this, but this was back in the day when teachers actually had authority and they could tell you what to do. And if you didn't do it, they could, they could like discipline you, you know. And my teacher's like, Jason, eat your peas. And I didn't want to eat my peas. I just didn't want to eat my peas. And so when she turned her back, I hid my peas in the empty chocolate milk container, okay. I thought I was being all sly, you know. And I got, I got up to go to, to the trash with my little styrofoam tray. And I got to the trash, and my teacher said, Jason, did you eat your peas? I said, yeah, look. And she said, what's well, in your milk cart? And she caught me. She knew it. She made me drink that mess, that sloppy pea chocolate milk juice. You're like, that, that wouldn't happen today. No, but it probably should, all right? Our kids would be better if they were for Anyways. That's kind of how I thought about prayer. It was like, I don't even know if I want to do this, but I always had like a youth pastor or someone like, you need, you need to do that. Like you, did you say your prayers today? You know, it's kind of always looking down at me like, you know, it's, that's how I felt about prayer, which brings me to this. I, I don't know if any of that kind of jived with you or not, if you ever thought any of that, but that brings me to this. Can, can prayer be enjoyable? Like, can, is it fun, right? And, and I, I'm here to convince you today, because I think it can. I think prayer, in fact, I'll start out like this. I personally believe if you're not having fun in prayer, you're doing it wrong, okay? So I, I want to help you with that today. So before we go any further, I want us to pause and to pray. And uh, if you're not familiar, this is just our custom here at Harvest. We, we just, we kind of get going in the Word, and then we pause, and we position our hearts to hear from the Lord. We ask the Holy Spirit to talk to us. And what's so fun about this is while one message is being preached, we're giving the Holy Spirit room to just come into this place and he'll talk to you about something and you about something and you about something. And he just works in our lives, okay? And so would you do that with me? You're ready to pray? It takes 20 seconds. Let's pray. Father, we invite you into this space right now, into, into our lives, into our hearts. And Lord, we just make room. We make room to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, we give you permission. Talk to us today. Lord, speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, amen. amen. A little boy was asking Jesus for a new bicycle. Have you ever prayed prayers like that? He was praying for a new bike, and he, he prayed every night. And on the, first, on the first night, he said, Jesus, if you get me a new bike, I will never scream or yell again. Have you ever tried to bargain with the Lord? And uh, he, didn't, he didn't get a bike. So on the second night, the little boy said, Jesus, if you get me a new bike, I promise I will be nice to my siblings. Right? I'll, I'll treat them kindly. He thought that might, might work. right? And he didn't get a new bike. On the third night, he said, Jesus, if you get me a new bike, I just, I, I'll do anything you want. Like, I'll just, I'll do anything. Whatever you want me, you know, want, want me to do. And he didn't get a new bike. And on the fourth night, I don't know if you ever felt this way, the little boy was fed up with Jesus not answering his prayers. Have you ever felt that way? And so he came up with a new strategy. He took a statue of Mary. He wrapped it in a blanket. He hid it in his closet. He locked the door and he knelt beside his bed. He said, Jesus, you ever see, want to see your mom again? You better get me a new bike. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever felt that way or not, but this is what happens in prayer is that, is that 
When you have to pray the same prayer over and over, and you're asking God more, and just it's like every day you're just it's warfare, it's work, it's a discipline. You're doing all of those things, and and, and if we're not careful, those things, while well, they really are true, they kind of suck the joy out of it. They suck the the the, the enjoyment out of it. And I, and I really think there's a joy to be found in prayer, but there's definitely a tension between the joy of prayer and the perseverance that's required often in our prayer lives. Uh, there's, there's a, just, let me give you several scriptures, and then we're going to dig into one in particular. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always and pray without ceasing, right? So in other words, always pray. Philippians 4, verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, all of them, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. First Chronicles 16, 11, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. So always persevere, right? Psalm 40 verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and he heard my cry. Psalm 116 2, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Colossians 4 2, devote yourselves. There's that word, devote, right? Devotion. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So if I just take that group of scriptures and there's a whole bunch more, we learn that we're to pray without ceasing, we're to pray about everything, we're to seek the Lord continually, we're to wait patiently for God to answer, we're to call on him as long as we live, and we're to devote ourselves to prayer. There's a persistence required in prayer, but let me add something today, and I want you to have fun while you're doing it. I want you to have fun. One day, as recorded in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus finished praying, and his disciples come to him, and they say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And so he gives them what we now call the Lord's Prayer. You're probably familiar with that. And then he tells them a story that really builds a case for persistence in prayer. And and, and I do believe that this is about persistence, but I also think that that if we're not careful, we miss miss the part that there's a joy to be found. Luke chapter 11, here's the story Jesus tells. Jesus says, suppose you have a friend, okay, and you go to him at midnight, and you say, friend, this is an auto request at midnight, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me. I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside says, right, he calls out, he says, don't bother me. How many of you would say that at midnight if your friend came to ask for bread? Right? I would too, okay? He says, don't bother me. I tell you, this is Jesus now, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, I I love this, the shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So Jesus is telling his disciples a story, and he's helping them to understand you know, what's happening here. But here's the deal. You and I, this is just all the time. When you read the Bible, you, you, you need to do some re- research so you understand culturally what's going on, because then it comes alive. It makes, it makes more sense. So in this story, part of the culture is that if someone came to your house, if a friend came to your house, didn't matter what time, and they knocked on your door, and they asked for help, you were honor-bound to host them. And part of that was to, was to give them food and water and to take care of them. So, so as Jesus is telling this story, this would have, they would have understood, like, like you know, I, I, would have, I would need to get out of bed and to help my friend. That, that's what's going on here. But in this story, the man won't get out of bed, right? Jesus says it. He said, what if he comes, but the man won't get out of bed? And so he starts teaching persistence. He even says, if the friend won't get out of bed because a friend which, you know, it's like, what kind of a friend is he? He says, because of the shameless audacity, then he'll get out of bed. And that, that, the word that's used there to describe shameless audacity, it's actually the only place in all of the New Testament that that particular word is used. And it, it actually has a negative connotation, okay? What he's describing is a persistence without feeling the embarrassment that you should feel, okay? 
Um, Lisa understands this, okay, because she's married to me. Uh, some of you understand this because of your spouse or your children or whoever, right? Are you ever with someone and they're just, they're just audacious and they're loud and they're just, they're just like crazy and, and, and you feel the embarrassment on their behalf, but you know they don't feel it? Have you ever been with, with someone like that, right? Like that's what this is describing, right? He's like, this is so this is audacious. Like this man should feel embarrassed because of how persistent he is. It's excessive. It's extreme, right? And many times it's, in this word is describing it's desperate, right? I, I'm just telling you, I'm not easily embarrassed, okay? But Lisa is, right? So I met Lisa in Bible college and I knew, I mean, I was like, she's the one. I came home first Christmas break and I told my, mo- my mom, I said, I met the girl I'm going to marry. And, and we weren't even dating yet. Like, I just, I knew, I'm like, she's the one. And I went back and I was like, I'm getting her. I'm going after this. She's the one. And I told, I warned all the other guys. I'm like, y'all stay, just back off. She's mine. I'm going for it. And so we had this, this thing coming up called class night. And, and it's like, you're supposed to ask a girl to, to go with you. And so I decided I'm going to ask ask her. And of course, my fat, I'm like, I'm going to be as audacious as possible, right? So we have chapel every day at Bible school. And uh, we didn't have projectors like we have now. We had an overhead projector. Does anyone remember those? You have the little clear film and you put it on it and it projects it up. So I printed up, I typed up a little thing and it said, Lisa Williams, that was her maiden name. Will you go to class night with me? And it had little boxes to check. Yes, no, and then I put my name on it, and I went to Office Depot, and I printed it on a slide, and I went, and I made friends with the girl that ran the overhead, and I said, hey, when you're putting the announcements up, I just need you to slip this one in there, right? And she did it. I couldn't believe she did it for me. So we're like standing there, and it's like, you know, the, the campus concert is happening, and this is, and then all of a sudden, it says, Lisa, will you go to class? Oh, bam, whoa, oh, the whole thing. And Lisa, this won't surprise you, she was talking to her friends. She didn't even see it. She's just, she's just like, just being a little social butterfly. And then the whole chapel is like, oh, you know, so you hear the air go out of the room and people are pointing at Lisa and laughing. And she doesn't know why. And she looks up and she just melts into her seat, just like disappears. And I'm like, she's mine. The whole school, the whole school knows it. You know, like that, that was my point. Right? I was like, I'm going to be audacious. I, I didn't care. It didn't embarrass me. It embarrassed her. It didn't embarrass me. That, that would have been, that's the word that, that's used in Luke, right? That, that's the comparison. Like, no, you should feel a little embarrassed. <laughs> like, it's worrisome that you don't understand. This is, right, that, that's what's happening. And so Jesus continues the story. So he sets him up to say this. So I say to you. Ask, he's talking about prayer now, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, everyone who receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of your fathers, and that goes back to tell another story, which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, so here's, here's kind of a big idea that I, I want to make sure you don't miss out of this story. Okay, here, here's the big idea. Here's, here's what it's showing you, okay? He's saying this, your father in heaven is nothing like your grumpy neighbor. That's what he's saying. Okay, be honest. How many of you in your life have ever had a grumpy neighbor? Maybe right now, maybe in another, maybe somewhere else, grumpy neighbor. I, I remember growing up, um, uh, growing up, I was probably like 12, probably 12, and uh, we, we had a grumpy neighbor that lived across the street, and uh, you know, it was my brother and I, and we had a couple uh, other boys that lived in the neighborhood, and we'd all gather in our driveway, and we'd play, you know, we'd play games, and most of the games involved some kind of a ball, right? We were hitting a ball, we were throwing a ball, we were kicking a ball, there was always a ball, right? And, and here's the deal. When the ball went in this neighbor's house, yard, you know, you know, the first time it went, I went and got the ball. I mean, it's just right there. Just, you got the ball. Next thing I know, grumpy neighbor's knocking on our door. Gets my mom, and he's like, your boys were in my yard. And she's so confused. Like, did they, 
vandalize something? Did they break something? No, they got their ball, you know, and he just stormed back to his house, you know. And so that just kept happening and kept happening. He called the police on us, you know. And can you imagine that? He's telling the police, like, their ball came into our yard, you know. And so the ball would go sometimes, and then we'd wait till it got dark. I'd get black on, put a ski mask on, sneak over, get my ball. You know, we, we just always had things going on. That, so Jesus, is, he's saying this. He's like, that's not what my father's like at all. He's not like your grumpy neighbor, right? In verse 7, he says the neighbor's annoyed, right? He calls out like, I'm in bed. Yeah, I'm not bringing you bread. He's, he's annoyed. And, and, and to be fair, I'd be, I'd be annoyed too if you came to my house at midnight and you're like, hey, pastor, can I have some milk? I'd be like, dude, get out of here, man. Right? Like, I, I, so I kind of get that. So maybe you're worried, right? Maybe you're worried, like, like, well, is God annoyed when I pray, right? Is, 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 is he get annoyed? No, because then he says, he says, ask, ask, right? I, I kind of think of the classic, you know, kid question on a road trip. We're, we're, we're about to make a road trip, so I've been thinking about this. The classic kid question or ADHD husband question, are we there yet, right? Are we there yet? 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 It's just so annoying, right? At least has to put up with me and all the kids, right? It's like we're a little chorus, right? a little quiet. Like, are we there yet? Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Uh, this is what I think about. And, and it's this, this, this idea, you know, like, 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 do we just annoy God until he answers our prayers, right? Listen, don't make the mistake of viewing God through the lens of your own human imperfect character, you see, we are impatient. We are selfish. But your Father in heaven, he's perfect. He's patient. He's not selfish. He's selfless. And so, so it's not the same. We don't, we don't just wear him down. In fact, your heavenly Father loves when you ask. He loves it. He loves it. The neighbor was in, was in bed, right? And he says, he says I'm, I'm not getting out of bed. It's, it's, it's inconvenient, right, in the story. He's like, he says, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. Um, several years ago, uh, it was Christmas Eve, and we were in, uh, in Baton Rouge to, for, for the holiday, and uh, we, uh, we were hanging out and, and getting ready for the holiday, and, and, and it was like 10 o'clock at night, and, uh, and Lisa comes to me, and she says, Jason, I think I'm late. I said, it's 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve. What are you late for? And she goes, no, like, I'm late. Like, I think I'm going to have a baby. I'm late. I'm like, what? No, we were not trying to do that. You know, 10 o'clock Christmas Eve, right? I said, I'm leaving. She goes, I did not. She goes you're leaving me. No, I said, no, I'm going to the store. I'm leaving. To, to, I've got to find a pregnancy test. We're a bear. I'm like, you, I can't have Christmas tomorrow. This is, you can drop this on me right now. So 10 o'clock at night, I'm driving around Baton Rouge trying to find a pregnancy test. Right? It's, it's awful. And everyone thinks clothes. And, and everyone's laughing at me. Like, it's Christmas Eve. We're not open. Oh, you know? I finally find, I finally find a store, you know, and I buy, I buy like four of them, you know, <laughs> they're 99% accurate, but I buy four, you know, and I, and I thought of that story, you know, because how inconvenient, you know, sometimes things just, they don't happen at the best of times, right? And I thought, I mean, Christmas Eve, 10 at night, like, what, what am I doing here, right? And this is in the story, it's like, he, he's coming at, at an inconvenient time, right? Can I, can I give you some good news about your father in heaven? He doesn't have banker hours, right? He didn't take Memorial Day off. If you're up at midnight, he's up. If you're up at four in the morning, he's up. Like wherever you are, he's there. Whatever you, I'm just telling you, this, is, this story, it really has a lot of good news in it that helps us with prayer. Here's Psalm 121 verse 3. It says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Like, he's always, he's always open, right? He's always open. He's paying attention. So, so what's the point of persistent prayer? Because, you know, is, do we just wear God down? Just, you know, knock and knock and knock and ask and ask and knock and knock and ask. And, you know, and, and I, just want you, I just want you to know this. You can't, you can't wear God down. Okay, you, 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 that's not how this works. You don't, you don't wear God down. He's God, all right? He'll outlast you, right? He, you, you don't wear him down. 
So, so here, here's, what I, here's what I think we miss in the, in the persistency. By praying persistently, you actually discover the goodness of God. Okay, it's, not, it's not just about being persistent. It's that in your persistency, you discover the goodness of God. Of God. That's why he goes after this story in verses 11 through 13, and he starts saying, the father, if, a, if a son comes to a father, asks for a gift, he didn't give a bad gift, he gives a good gift. That's why he's connecting this here. He, he says, and just like that, your Father in heaven will give you the Holy Spirit, will give you good gifts. So many of you already do this part. Uh, many of you have a prayer list. Uh, maybe it's in a journal, or maybe it's on a phone, or maybe it's a note that's stuck in your Bible. But many of you already, you have a prayer list, uh, things that you're praying for, people you're praying for. Uh, your, your kids' names are on there. Your, your family's names are on there. Unsaved loved ones are on there. You, you've got a list there, P things that are going on. You've you, you got a prayer list, right? And I, and I just want to encourage you, because, because in this persistency, I want you to discover the goodness of God, Okay? So I, I'd love to encourage you to not just have a prayer list, but to have a prayer answered list. That's when you start remembering the goodness of God. I, I, this, this week, uh, I didn't ask if I could tell, her th tell this story if I might get in trouble, but Susan uh, and Rebecca came in, and they, they were meeting with Pastor Tyler about some things, and, and I just stopped by, and I'm like, hey, how are y'all? And we start talking, and Susan had this notebook, and it was just page after page after page, and as we were talking, she said, pa Pastor, i got to share how God's been answering my prayers, and she flips back, and she's reading me all the, she said, and this happened, and this happened, and God did this, and I said, what, what is that? And she goes, this is all the prayers that God has answered this year. And it was, I'm just telling you, page after page after page. And some of them, some were little, or what we would call little, right? And some were, some were big, and some were more in between. Here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. This is why a prayer answered list is so important, is that when you begin to recognize the goodness of God, you realize he's better than you gave him credit for. You, you see the little things. I'll say it this way just because it might, it might stick in your head. When you notice the goodness of God, he gets gooder. <laughs> he does. I'm just telling you. He gets gooder. I mean, all of a sudden, you're like, look at that. Look at that front parking space. Oh, my goodness, right? Oh, man, look how. Look at that clearance sale. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at, look at, look. My husband took the trash out. Oh, God is good, right? <laughs> My wife made dinner tonight. God is good, right? right? We got a scholarship for Mercy's College. God is good, right? You just start, you just start, I'm just telling you. The, the, the persistence part, is, it's wonderful. But what happens, we get our heads down and we just, we, we go to work. We go to work and we miss the goodness of God. We miss it. Man, he's been answering this prayer and this prayer and this prayer and this prayer and this prayer. But we're so focused on the one or the two that he hasn't answered yet. And I just want to help you because this is where you start to find joy is to recognize the goodness of God. So, so it's prayer fun. Let me, let, me just, let me teach you. This will go real fast. Let me teach you six things. They all start with the letter I just because. Uh, and, 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 and I'm hoping these things will inspire you. That's another I, by the way. That's seven now. Um, these will inspire you to enjoy prayer. Okay? So six things real quick. Number one, um, it's intrinsic. Okay? It's intrinsic. That just means it's, it's natural. People, Christian, non-Christian, whatever, people are looking for answers. Do you know anyone in your life looking for answers? People are looking for hope. Am I right? We I mean, think of coworkers. It doesn't matter if they go to church, don't go to church. They're looking for hope. They're looking for meaning, right? They're looking for something greater for than, than themselves, right? Like it, I'm just telling you, in you, it's intrinsic. There's something in you that says, I need to search out and find answers and find meaning and find purpose. And so I'm just telling you, we will search that out in so many ways. And what I'm encouraging you as Christ followers to do is to make the decision to seek the right things or rather to seek the right person. There's a lot of ways to seek and, and you're intrinsically going to be driven to seek. I mean, I mean, I'm encouraging, this is prayer, seek the person of God, seek the person of Jesus, seek the, the person of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 27 verse 8 says, my heart says of you, seek his face. 
It's the intrinsic. My heart cries out. Seek his face. So the psalmist says, your face, Lord, will I seek. So what happens sometimes is in our seeking, we, we get off track and we, and, and we start excelling in, in our job and we start making a bigger paycheck and we think, if I seek this, it'll bring me meaning. If I seek this, it'll make me happy. If I, if I chase after this and I get more and I get more stuff and I get more, then, then I'll be happy. And then we get down that road and we go, oh, it didn't work. And so I'm, I'm just helping you, that, that intrinsic thing in you that wants to seek, just, just go after the Lord. Just go after the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God, the Bible says, and all the other things will be added unto you. Here's the second eye. It's intimate. It's intimate. Again, I'm trying to help you find the joy in prayer, okay? Because sometimes prayer just becomes a list, right? It's not intimate. It's like, hey, God, so I'm here. My pastor said I had to pray. So I'm doing the Glorify app, and I got 10 minutes, and I'd like to talk to you. By the way, my husband's being a jerk. My kids are annoying. My dog pooped on the carpet. Um, Yeah, this has been fun. Okay, I'll see you later. You're missing it. I'm just telling you. And you walk away like, that wasn't fun at all. No, it wasn't, because it's supposed to be intimate. Intimacy is fun. Married people, Intimacy is fun, right? Come on. You're missing it in prayer if you're just doing a, a to-do list. I mean, just, just, just think for a minute. The God of the universe wants to stop and listen to you, wants to talk to you, wants to interact with you. You're not, you're not annoying God when you review kind of your list Right? But I will tell you, if that's all you're doing, you're leaving a lot on the table. Don't just do the list. I mean, part of the Lord's Prayer, right, is like, give us today our daily bread. That's a request for God to take care of our needs. That's part of praying. Do it. But don't stop there. Don't stop with the list. Go deeper. Get intimate. Get to know God. Let God get to know you. James 4, 8 says, come near to God, and he will come near to you. It's beautiful, right? It's this intimacy. It's this dance, right? I don't dance, but it's this dance. It's, a, it's like I, I come in, and he comes in, and we, get, we, he, we talk. It's, it's intimate, okay? It, it's, here's the third one. It's intriguing. It's intriguing. When you're praying, and you're, and you're doing it right, and you're finding the joy, God leans in, and he, he tells you secrets, <laughs> He whispers things in your ear. Jeremiah, I love this verse, 33.3 says, Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Isn't that beautiful? Ask me. He says, and I'll lean in and I'll share things with you that I'm not sharing with with the general public. Right? Like I'm talking to you because right now you're my son and you've come to me. And we're we're talking. So I'm going to whisper to you. I'm going to talk to you. I was telling someone this morning in the lobby, I was, I, 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 this week I, I went for a long run, and one of the things I love about long runs is, is the chance for, I, I can't do anything else. I can't call people, I can't text people, I can't answer emails, I can't read the news, I can't do, I just, so I'm just running, I'm just thinking, I'm praying, my mind's just kind of, you know, it's doing its thing, and all of a sudden, this will happen, it doesn't happen every time, but a lot of times, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just will interrupt that. Bam, he started to talk to me. And I'm just telling you, this week, this is what happened. I'm thinking about prayer, and I'm just running. And all of a sudden, all these words, intrinsic, you know, and, and all, I can't tell you all the other eyes because I'm going to get ahead. But all of a sudden, this is where it came from. He just started talking to me, talking to me. Talking. And I felt, I felt like, I mean, I was just, I was running down, you know, down a public street. But I felt like it was just me and God, and we were just in a secret place. And he was just whispering. And I thought, man, this, it's so intriguing how, how he'll just talk to you, and he'll, he'll help you, and he'll, He'll spend time with you. Here's the, here's the fourth one. It's, it's, uh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, just think about it. <clears throat> you get to talk to God. So again, not, don't think of it like work, discipline, warfare. Like You have the chance to meet with God. I mean, imagine today, I mean, it doesn't matter what you believe politically, but just imagine today you got a phone call and, and, and the, your friend said, hey, you have been invited to the White House tomorrow morning to meet with the president. I don't care if you like him or you don't like him. That's a big deal. 
It's a big deal. So let me just help you. Let me help you out. You have been invited to meet with God. I don't know if you know this. The president's here. God's here. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget. All right? And our governor is somewhere down here. Okay? Governor, president. Okay? Maybe not on TV. It's incredible. You get to meet with God. In Matthew 6, Jesus says to his disciples, he says, don't pray like the religious people on the street corners and, 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 and boastful. He says this. He says, but when you pray, go by yourself. Shut the door. Pray to your father in private. And then your father who sees everything will reward you. Like, how cool is that? You get in a secret place with God and, and you're just, you're there. it's just you and him. And you're just talking about life and your problems and the world. And he's whispering in your ear and he, he's talking. I mean, how incredible is that? There's a quote by E. Stanley Jones. He says, if I throw out a boat hook from the boat and I catch hold of the shore and I pull, do I pull the shore to me or do I pull myself to the shore? And he says this, prayer is not pulling God to my will, but the aligning of my will to the will of God. It's, just, it's incredible. It's incredible. I'm just telling you, prayer is incredible. Here's the fifth one. It's infinite. It's infinite. This is part of, you know, I told you I thought prayer was boring when I was a kid. It's because I just saw it this way. It was like, here's the method every day. But listen, prayer is infinite. It, it, it's always evolving. It never gets old. It's dynamic, right? Every day is different. It's a conversation. It's, I mean, it, it's just, it's always, like, it's supposed to, 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 to be a moving kind of motion. It, 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 that, it, it's, it's, it's infinite, Isaiah chapter 6, uh, just, uh, the, uh, the prophet is describing uh, a vision. He says, in the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He's, he's seen a vision. High, exalted, seated on the throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim. Those are, those are angels with six wings. And with two wings, they cover their faces. With two, they cover their feet. With two, they're flying. That's why they needed six wings. And they're calling out to one another. So the angels, this is the picture. They're flying around the throne. They're looking at the Lord. And they're calling out to one another. And what are they calling out? They're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And here, here's the picture. I love this picture. My, my, one of my mentors, Pastor Hennessy, taught me out of this verse, and I just, I love it. I love it so much. I don't, I don't know if you've ever, ever been in a place like, like uh, years ago, Mercy and I went to New York City, and we went to the, to the, to the Met, to the Metropolitan Art Museum there, and, and we, we, we looked at, at like Van Gogh paintings, and we looked at Picassos, and you know, we looked at all these pictures, and, and, and there, were, there were halls that were like three-dimensional like carvings and, and statues, and, and, and those were so intriguing because you'd look at it, and it looked a particular way, and you'd kind of... Like get here and be like mercy, come here, and it looked different. And we keep moving around, and it looked different. And it's like as you walked around it, every view you got a different perspective. And this is what Isaiah is seeing: is the angels. They're like they're looking at God over here. They're going, "Oh, holy! Oh, look, look at that!" And this one over here is like, "But you should see him from over here. It's totally different." And this guy's over here, like, oh, "Guys, you gotta see this." That's what happens in prayer. It's, it's like you think you've seen God, just, just keep spending time with him, and all of a sudden you see a new view, a new perspective, and, and your heart cries out, holy, holy, holy. And the next day is a new day, and you're facing new things, and you need new resources, and you need new wisdom, and you see a new, oh, holy, holy. Are you seeing this? I'm just telling you, if, you, if, you, if you're bored in prayer, it's your own fault. You're doing it wrong. Because It's infinite. And then here's the last one. Here's the last one. We'll end with this. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. Here's what I want you to know. Prayer is interactive. It's a back and forth. This is where, this is where it's going to get boring if all you do is tell God all your things that you need him to do for you. It's, a, it's exciting when you show up and say, God, what do you got for me today? What do you want to talk to me about? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk to, right? What if, what if we, let, let me just help you. Prayer, in prayer, you will get the biggest invitations of your life. And it is so much fun. You know, Pastor Jace was talking about what, what we're doing right now because of the wildfires up in Mora. 
Let me, let me just tell you. Let me, let me tell you some stories. Because, you know, he mentioned this. He said, we have a pastor that says yes. And that's, that's part of our language around here is, is, is this is how we say it. We, we just say yes. We say yes. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how we're going to pay for it. We don't know how we're going to get things there. We don't know if we have enough people. We don't know. We just, yes. All right, God, yeah. In fact, when Lisa and I came to Harvest nine years ago, we made a deal with God. We said, we'll do anything you tell us to do. Our answer before we, it's, it's always yes. And it, I'm just telling you what we did is we answered the call of a great, big, creative, awesome God. And he said, all right, come with me on the greatest adventure of your life. So let me, let me just tell you, let me tell you some stories. So yesterday, it was real short notice. So if I tell you this, and you're like, you didn't invite me, or, you know, I didn't, I didn't get to go. Just, it was short, it was last minute. We threw it out there. A few people signed up. We'll do it again. Don't get your feelings hurt, all right? Don't get your feelings hurt. But a group of us, we have a picture. A group of us went up, went up yesterday. In fact, this is our second trip this week. This is, this is a great group of guys. They, they just right away, they said, we'll go with you, Pastor. We got, we got there, and, and we delivered supplies. I'm going to tell you more about that in a second. And this is us. We drove up the mountain, and, and I wanted the guys to see, you know, the devastation. And I told them, I said, you know, the prayer can happen anywhere. You don't have to be in a certain place. But I do think when you're in a place, you see it in a different way, and it affects the way you pray. And so I said, I wanted you all to see this. And then I said this. I said, I've been coming up here for, by myself for a month and, and putting my hands towards the mountains and praying for rain or snow or hail or any kind, you know, any, whatever, however he wants to send it, you know, and asking God for that. I said, and so I needed some reinforcements. I said, so, so we circled up on the side of the highway. It was awesome. And we just prayed and we prayed and every, we took turns. It was, it was really fun. It was powerful. And, we, we, and then we went back down the mountain and we, 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 uh, we, had, we grilled uh, burgers for the volunteers that are serving where, where we've been taking things and we just we just hung out with them and blessed them and and, uh, and ate burgers and rice krispie treats and chips and and it, the rice krispie treats had the holy spirit in them and it was fun <laughs> it was really fun so let me let me let me let me try to help you let me try to help you so so w- when the when the fire started my buddy Derek called me he said we had to do something and so i said yes let's do it I don't know what to do. Let's do it. And I called Jace, and I said, do you have a trailer that I can borrow? Put some water on? He said, yes. So I drove to his house. I got a trailer. I pulled into a Albertsons. I said, can I buy pallets of water? They're like, ah, we're not really selling pallets right now. I said, they're for the fire relief. They said, we're selling pallets. <laughs> <laughs> and so like the first trip, I think, I think it was like $500 worth of water. And this is all I could carry because it was heavy. And, and we headed up there. We got there, and we we, we, they wanted, I told you part of this story, but we, we couldn't really get to where, where, where the people needed the help. And so we, we kind of did the persistent thing. And we just were like, we're not giving up. And we started calling and calling. And finally, we found a guy that knew a guy that knew a guy that knew a girl that knew a guy. And that guy knew the sheriff. And the sheriff said, come on, I'll get you in there. And so he took us in and we delivered water. And when we did that, we met a guy named Joseph. And Joseph's just a normal guy, right? Kind of like Elijah, just a normal guy, right? And he's up in water, and he, he, he's set up. He, he's a resident. He's been there forever. And he just said, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm helping my people. And so he just started. And so I said, well, hey, we're a, I, I'm, I represent a church in Albuquerque. And Joseph, we're with you, man. We're behind you. We're going to support you. We're just going to keep bringing stuff to you. So the next week, I went to Costco with Ava, and we loaded uh, up. And I, I could fit $1,000 worth of you know, groceries in the back of my, my truck. And so that week, I drove it up there, and we figured out, how, again, how to get there. It was a little less complicated the second time. And we got there, and I said, hey, Joseph, we're back. And he's like, wow, you meant it. I said, yeah, man, we're with you, bro. I'm telling you. Harvest is with you. We love you guys. And we gave him those groceries. And we came back, and we went, and we did it again. And that we spent another, you know, $1,000 or so. And, and I'm just telling you, he was like, I, I just, it was all we could do. That's what we could do. We just kept doing what we could do. And then all of a sudden, because this is what happens when you say yes, God's like, come on, it's about to be an adventure. And I'm just telling y'all, all of a sudden, things begin to happen. And I got a phone call from a ministry in Colorado, and I got a phone call from a church in Alabama, and I got a phone call from a disaster relief organization in Austin, and I got a phone call from Convoy of Hope, and I got a, all these things started to happen. And, and I'll just tell you, let me tell you this part of the story. So last week, uh, I got a text from a, a friend, and we hadn't seen each other in a while. He's here today. His name's Chris. He lives in Arizona. And he said, hey, I'm in town for work. And I said, you want to grab a burger or something? And so we went to Laguna Burger because the Holy Spirit, just he, he has a permanent place there. 
<clears throat> and we, uh, we ordered some bacon cheeseburgers, and he got green chili, and I did not. And we were, eating, we were eating cheeseburgers. I said, how's your job going? He said, oh, man, I got a new job. I said, oh, what are you doing? He says, I'm selling horse feed. I said, that's weird. <laughs> okay. And he says, yeah. And when I got to New Mexico, I realized there was a big fire, and I called my boss. And my boss said he wants to donate horse feed. I said, that's cool. So I went from that's weird to that's cool. And he goes, it was so cool. We're eating cheeseburgers. And he goes, the only problem is, I don't know where to take it. And I just went, this isn't about bacon cheeseburgers. The Lord wanted this to happen. I pulled my phone. I'm like, dude, this is me at the fire four days ago. I met ranchers who need horse food. What? <laughs> Listen, like this, things begin to happen. All of a sudden, his company said, we'll send up a semi-load, $20,000 worth of horse food, okay? And then we kind of got frustrated because we tried to figure out the shipping. It's coming from California, and it wasn't working. It was going to be expensive, and ah, all this stuff. Yeah, right? We kind of got frustrated. This is so cool. I don't know if you knew this. Do you know that Uber has a freight division? <laughs> Did you know that? You can Uber freight wherever you want. Do you know that? I didn't know that. So he calls Uber. He's like, let me tell you what's going on. And they said, we have, we have a fund for disasters. Uber, this is so cool, is bringing a semi of horse food from California to Mora, New Mexico. And it's, I'm just I'm trying to help you. It all starts with li these little, little yeses. Little, yes, I'll go with a pallet of water. Yes, I'll buy a little bit more. Yes, I'll persevere. Yes, and God's just like, come on, adventure, adventure, let's go. We're going farther. We're going farther. And I'm finding myself this week, I'm, I'm up there, and we're unloading water. And all of a sudden, like, the, 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 Joseph comes, like, Pastor, they need, they need water further up the mountain behind the fire line in Chacon. I said, I don't know where Chacon is, but I'll go. And they load the water, and I drive up, and the police stop me. I'm like, hey, I'm the water delivery guy going to station number six up in Chacon. He goes, cool, I just need to get your name in case you die. And he writes it down. <laughs> You know, serious. And he lets me, and I'm driving back there, and all of a sudden, I'm driving up the mountain, and this, I hear, doom, 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 and a big old giant helicopter comes over me, dips down in the creek, sucks water out of the creek, flies over to dump it on the mountain, and I just thought, this is so cool! God, I love following Jesus! Put you in the best place. And I pull in where the firemen are, and we're unloading water, and they're from North Carolina, and they're from uh, some other place, that can't, Oregon. They're from Oregon, and we're unloading water. And then I remembered, because this is the things we get to do when we're generous, is, is I, there's a beef jerky store around the, around the corner. And I, went, and I said, hey, I just want like as much beef jerky as I can buy for $150. So they loaded me up all these little baggies. So we unloaded the water for all these hot shots. And I, I said, hey, I, thank y'all. I mean, I know this is your job. But thank you for coming to New Mexico. I mean, this, this is a big deal for us. I said, can I, can I give y'all some beef jerky? You would have thought I said, can I give you gold bars, <laughs> right? I mean, all these grown men are like, beef jerky, you know? And so I'm handing out beef jerky. We're not like making it rain, beef jerky, you know? I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. Convoy of Hope Calls. Come a hope calls. They said, Jason, we're bringing you a truckload of a truckload of supplies. Yesterday we unloaded 22 pallets, socks and tuna, and peanut butter and, and hand wipes and I'm just all oh, kind. I mean, just unloading stuff. This week a, a bread company in, in uh, Santa Fe called. They said, we'll supply all the bread you need for as long as you need. I sent Richard. I said, I said, how much bread can we get the first time? I said, oh, like, a, like a pickup bed. He shows up with a pickup. They fill the pickup. They fill his back seat. They put bread on his trailer. I mean, we have bread like going everywhere, right? I mean, I'm just like miracle after miracle after miracle. And I've just found myself over and over going, man, following Jesus is really fun. He invited us. I'm just telling you, this is where it starts, in the closet it in prayer. We're, we're talking, and he says, come with me on an adventure, and I don't know where we're going or how much we're going. And I just go, yes, let's go. And this is the places we end up. And so this is pretty cool. This week, just this week, Harvest, and, and we're not, we didn't give up. We just facilitated this. This week, 
We brought over $100,000 worth of supplies into Mora, New Mexico to help people in crisis. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. It's awesome. So Pastor Tyler came with me this week, and we, we got a little video, and I just want to show you because uh, I, think, I think you'll see what's going on. So check this out. Hey, Harvest. We just finished our fourth delivery of supplies up in Tamora to help with the wildfire disaster. And they say a picture's worth a thousand words, so we're hoping a video's worth at least a million. I wanted to help you to see uh, what's happening because of your generosity. Uh, the need here is massive. And uh, most days when we come up, it feels like we're barely putting a dent in it. But I promise you that for the individuals and the families who are receiving the supplies that we're bringing up, it means the world to them. So Harvest, thank you for your ongoing generosity. We are in this for the long haul. We always say we love our city. Now we're expanding that and we say we love our state. And we're here, we're here to do anything we can to bring hope and help to the people in New Mexico and uh, through that to bring the hope of the gospel. So Harvest, you're amazing. Thank you for all that you do and let's keep going. Why don't you stand with me? Why don't you stand with me? We're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna try to close. But can I can I just I'm gonna share I wanna share a big dream with you. Is that all right? Yeah. Can I share a big dream with you? This is this is what's happening as I'm spending time with the Lord is it's just he just keeps inviting us on this crazy adventure. So this week I, I have a dream. Um, I try to live by this uh, this principle, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Isn't that a great way to live? You know, and you know, I've been going up there and I look around, I'm like, man, it's just it's too big. It's we can't, I don't know how to fix this. I don't you know. And so we're just we're just finding the ones. We're just finding one and just doing for one what we can do for everyone. So so I'm, I'm asking you, I'm invite, so the Lord's invited me, now I'm inviting you, okay? So here's the big dream, okay? Is I want to find one family who lost their home, and they're uninsured, and they don't, they're right now, literally right now, they're like, I don't know what we're going to do, I don't know how we're going to do this. They own their land, right? But most of the land up there has been passed down in, through families, generations, so they own their land, but now, the, now their house is gone. I want to I find one family, and I want to go to them, and I want to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to get you a new house. And we're going to hook everything up. And we're going to furnish it. And we're going to set you up. And we wish we could do it for everyone. But we're going to do it for you. And we're going to believe that other people are going to come on board. And that together we're, we're going to rebuild. How many of you like that, like that dream? So there's already some things at work. Okay, there's already some things at work. I don't exactly know how this is going to happen. And like, I'm just telling you, if the things God's inviting you to don't scare you a little bit, you need to press in a little more because it's too safe. Like if right now the Lord's like, man, if you're, if you're like, I think the Lord's telling me to give $20. It's probably not even the Lord. Like it's probably just your compassionate heart. I'm just saying, like, like his dreams are so much, so much bigger, so much bigger. And I'm just telling I don't know how we're going to do this. But, but I think we're going we're gonna to try and we're going to do it. We're going to work on it. We're going to see what God, we're just going to say yes, right? So I hope today I've convinced you that prayer can be fun. It is work. It is a discipline. It is warfare. It, it, it is those things. But I'm just telling you, it's fun. It's so fun to go on this journey with the Lord, interact with him, engage with him. And I'm hoping that today I've stirred your heart. To, in, to engage with the Lord at a, at a different level than maybe, you, maybe you've been doing. And I can't wait to see the things that he invites us to collectively. So I'm going to ask our worship team to lead us in one final song. And then we'll come back up. We're going to pray together. And then we'll dismiss, all right? Worship team, lead us this morning.
Tear down every lie Said the wrong thing Cause when you have your way Something has to break Something has to break this moment 
uh, to press into the incredible power and wisdom and resource of God. And some of you, I could, I could sense it, I could feel it in your, in your audacity as you were singing. You were singing with audacious person. You're like, something has to change. I, we can't stay this way. It's got to happen. My marriage has to change. My life has to change. My, it's got to change. And if that's you today, listen, it can happen. It can happen. Like, why not today? Why not? Why, why, why not? Today, today would be an awesome day for everything to change, right? And so I just want to pray with you. So if that's you, just right where you're at. You know, you don't have to come forward. Or anything. If that's you, I just want to know who I'm praying with. And this is your, this is your faith. Would you just lift your hand? Just like audaciously. As audacious. So Father, I pray right now with every one of my friends that are lifting their hands. I pray, Lord, that that thing, that, that situation, that as we sang, that in their heads they were singing, something has to change. But they're thinking about their, their spouse, their kids, their job, their purpose, their life, their, their friends, their city, their their, their nation, their, something was in their hearts. And Lord, I just come in agreement with my friends today that d- something does have to change. Lord, I'm so thankful that because your son went to the cross, change is possible. We don't have to stay stuck. We don't have to stay mediocre. We don't have to just stay where we are. We don't have to stay sick. We don't have to stay in brokenness. We don't have to stay there. And so, Lord, we audaciously ask you today for miracles to happen all across this room right now in marriages, in families, in lives, in in our health, in our our bodies. We, We just pray right now for the power of God to come head to head with the need in our lives because we know who's going to win. So I declare in Jesus' name the miracles will happen right now in our lives. And we say again, we say something has to change. But we serve a God who is more than able. More than able. And now, if you will, if you're willing to accept the invitation of God, would you just, would you just open your, your hands to the Lord? I just want to pray this over his heart. Lord, Lord, harvest is saying, here we are, send us. <laughs> we say yes to the invitations. We'll go, we'll go, Lord, wherever you want us to go, whatever you want us to do. God, put big dreams in our hearts. Put big dreams in our hearts for our families, for our neighborhoods, for our kids, for our families. Put big dreams in our heart for our city. Put big dreams in our heart for New Mexico. Put Right now, Lord, we just say yes. We say yes. We're going to listen for your invitation. And we're going to follow. And Lord, your kingdom is going to be expanded. You're going to be glorified. People are going to discover the goodness of God as we follow you, as we say yes. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Man, whoo, I love y'all. Did you know that? Did you know that? I love you. By the way, here's an invitation. Um, we have cases of tomatoes and bell peppers. And I, I, need, I need a guy with a truck that would drive those to Mora tomorrow because that would be the best place for them because you're not going to take enough today. So seriously, if you have a truck and time, come see me. We'll work out the logistics of getting those up there, all right? Are you excited? Can prayer be fun? Can prayer be fun? Yeah, you better believe it. All right, Harvest, I love you as you're leaving. May the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, give you grace now and forever. Harvest, go be the church. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning, Harvest Online. My name is Tyler, and right now, live at Harvest, we're taking two minutes to do something we call meet and greet. It's to meet someone. 